Oh, hi. Welcome back. So, during my lunch break today, I made this guy. It's just two pieces of 2 by 6 screwed together on top of this piece of 2 by one that I cut on diagonal, so it's got a little bit of a slant, but you can't really tell when it's on a bed. And this came today. It is a tone tattoo by Electro Harmonics. So now my pedal board is complete for now. Also, I decided I just really like these cables. They are too short, but not short enough. If that makes any sense. Like in order for them to sit flat and nicely, the pedals have to be kind of far away and then it makes them weird. They don't like to go down in this section. This is fine, I guess, but I think I would prefer just the ones that go directly between. Although if I'm going to put hook and loop tape on this, I might not care as much because at least the pedals would actually like sit still on here. Like right now I have them set so that they won't really skitter about, but it took a little bit of finagling to make them sit still. And for now, as until I decide whether I want to keep this package, I'm cheating. <laughs> I'm using this without opening it, as long as I got this cable correct. And I'm pretty sure this is the right one. <laughs> uh, but I don't know how much I'm going to use the Ditto today, because I kind of want to just play around with these guys. And because the cloak has no labels on it, I actually pulled up the manual for reels this time, so I know which knobs do what, and I took notes. So, here are my notes. The cloak has this button knob is a high cut, so that's going to cut the higher order harmonics from signal to the softer edges of high shimmer settings. So yesterday when I was playing around and, it had, and I was on my E string, it had really, really high pitched harmonics. So if I turned this down when I was playing higher, that would cut back on those. This is the shimmer knob, which I think I figured out just intuitively. So it controls whether or not there is shimmer, and if you put it all the way down to the counterclockwise direction, you get a rich broom ver reverb. All the way up to the other side, you get a bunch of shimmer. So there's that. This knob is the mix. So this determines how much dry signal comes through. So after I stopped playing I was listening back to things and the second half of what I was playing had a lot of my violin coming through which I didn't really like I wanted more reverb so if I had played around with this more that would have fixed it and I, I think there's a chunk in there where I was playing with this on the farther counterclockwise side which makes the reverb pedal take over more because there's not as much dry signal I think I have the right no it's backwards this direction, I think, is 100% dry, and this is 100% wet. So, and then this is the room size. So if you put it all the way counterclockwise, it's a really small room. If you put it all the way clockwise, it's a really big room. So that's all the notes for the cloak. And then I read the drop notes, which really I didn't need to read a ton of notes. This one's pretty self-explanatory because it just goes up and down. But if I had read closer on this extra little knobby here, this, I don't think I had it set to this, but I forget. So this is actually an octave below and you get dry signal out. So you could be playing like a, an in unison duet with yourself at your instrument's current octave and the octave down with this guy on. And then this flippy switch determines what the foot switch does. So if you have this off, which is it, it is right now, when you push the foot switch, it's just going to control whether or not the drop is on. And then if you have, depending on what the foot switch is set to, determines what the on button does. So if the foot switch is off and then you flip this up, the foot switch will turn it on when you hold it down, but it won't leave it on. So it'll momentarily is what that means. So as long as you're holding down the foot switch, the drop is on and you will be pitched down an octave or just an octave now. 
without the dry signal, but if you had the pedal on and then you turned this switch on, it's always going to be on unless you momentarily hit the foot switch down. So this will turn it off and then when you let go, it turns it back on again. So I'm going to just leave it in that position for now. And then last but not least, with a ton of glare on the pretty artwork, the Tone Tattoo is a collection of three of their petals. So it's got the Memory Toy, which is these four knobs down here, the Neo Clone, which includes these two knobs, and the Metal Muff, which includes these four knobs and these switchy nubbins in here. And they're each individually addressable, controllable, and it passes through the whole thing. So this one, the delay pedal, is what the memory memory toy is. So you have control of how much delay, the feedback, which is how many times it delays or how many repeats it's going to get, the gain, um, which controls cutoff, I think, um, and blend, which I don't really want to go into because I ran out of ink. My fountain pen ran out of ink, so <laughs> I decided to stop and actually start playing with these guys. But the only one I actually read, which is what I cared most about, is the Metal Muff, because I really wanted to put distortion on things today. So this is the uh, treble knob. So if you have it down, it's going to cut the treble. If you have it up, it's going to increase the treble. And this is the bass, and it does the same thing, but down in the 105 hertz range. This is a 700 hertz range. Then the volume obviously controls the volume of the pedal. Drive determines how crunchy it's going to be, so this is not going to be very crunchy. And then all the way up here is going to be super crunchy. Um, this is the gain button, so right now the pedal is on. And if the gain button is off, this LED will be red, which it is right now. And if you push the gate, uh, sorry, gate, I said gain, but I meant gate, which it says right there. If you push this down and the pedal's on, it should be green, and that'll tell you whether the gate's on or not. And then this threshold nubbin determines how loud you have to be to get through the gate. Um, so that, that controls these two things. And then this guy is scoop, which controls the 1.2 kilohertz range. And obviously right now it's off because it's in the lowest position. If you turn it to the middle position, it's going to cut 7.5 decibels from the 1.2 kilohertz range. And then if you have it on high, it's going to cut 11 decibels off of it. So that controls the mid range, I think is what they said. So yeah, now we can play around with them. Also... I didn't say anything about it yesterday, maybe I did, I don't know. This is now on mono mix, so I can get both of my headphone ear pieces making noise. Mm, yeah, so I'm gonna see if I can play more toxicity with the actual distortion in my octave-pitched bass stuff. <laughs>